Dear guests, uh, it's my pleasure, both that are currently present here and those that are watching us online and those that will watch us afterwards in YouTube, it will remain there accessible. It's my pleasure to open the second session of our forum. It is uh, consisting of, uh, in fact, two panels. The one is dedicated to the industry. Here we'll have presentations of eight leading companies in the area of microelectronics and mechatronics. And the second class panel will be a round table, which will be held here. So it will be in a form of studio, informal communication and dialogue. But still, we are ahead of the panel with the industry. Our first presenter will be Silvan Kulo. He is the site manager of Malexis Bulgaria. This is one of the leading companies and uh, let's say with more than 20 years of history presence in Bulgaria. Their branch uh, outside of Belgium uh, is uh, in Bulgaria is the biggest uh, non-Belgian branch. So uh, Mr. Uh, Silvan Kulo is also a member of the managing board of the cluster of microelectronics and industrial electronic systems. We are in uh, regular contact and uh, have uh, put a lot of resources in the past year uh, in order to maintain and boost uh, the achievements. We mentioned that our achievements are in three, at least three uh, directions. One is the priorities for Bulgaria, second is the consultative microelectronics council, and the third is the inclusion of microelectronics in the smart specialization strategy. Silvan is quite active in this area, he is supporting. Also, I would like to thank uh, personally to him that uh, uh, without his help, we could not uh, realize today's event in terms of logistics. So, Silvan, uh, it's my pleasure to give you the floor. Please proceed. Thank you, Georgi. Can you hear me well? Yeah, we hear you clearly well, which is surprising, but still, we hear you. You may go. We'll see, we'll see how long we yeah. stay like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Yogi. Uh, it was uh, uh, well done. Thank you for that, and thank you for organizing. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, let me uh, share my screen first. Uh, and uh, starting by, I don't know if you can see my screen now. Yes. Yeah. So, first of all, uh, I don't see you anymore, eh? so I see only my screen. Uh, first of all, uh, let me first apologize for not being with you today, uh, physically in the room. It's a great event that is organized today, and uh, yeah, I would have loved to be here. I had to uh, deal with uh, my commitment, and I'm now in Varna with the Belgian business community, which is another uh, responsibility. Of that. So, uh, winning online. I'm honored to open the industry chapter of today. Uh, I will try to make the coming minutes interesting. I heard uh, some interesting presentation before the break, uh, so I, I will try to keep the tone there. In this today, 10 minutes, I want to help you some, um, some view and thought related to one of the common ground that we have between microelectronics and make innovation uh, and innovation topic and our highly growing needs uh, in talented engineers to continue our development. That's, that's why I call it a priority for all of us. Starting from us, Malexis, uh, we are a true and successful engineering company. Some facts and figures might illustrate that. Uh, we create uh, innovative semiconductor solution for the best imaginable future. We develop and sell innovation, we sell solutions to our customers uh, in automotive and beyond. You see later on that we have also uh, quite a number of applications uh, that we are delivering as well, mainly in sensing and driving solutions, but also in lighting solutions. Mix, not only mixing of silicon, but also uh, application of safety critical and uh, availability critical in harsh environments. We are in a, a micro offering microelectronic solutions. We are creating microelectronic solutions. And as I said, mainly automotive, but as you can see on the right of the screen, a lot of virus, uh, various applications as well. 
uh, we, we face technical challenges that are given to us by our customers or by our research, uh, and we need to, uh, to work in the domain of more, sus of more sustainable homes and cities, uh, or uh, current sensing or embedded solution to drive Internet of Things connections. More, more and better environmental sensors will emerge to measure air quality, water quality, monitor mechanical properties of buildings, smart lighting. So a bright future in front of us. I think that I don't need to convince any of the people in the room now. Successful we are because we just a number we delivered in 2021, one, more than 1.7 billion chips in the world, uh, which is uh, our, of course, our top report in our history. Now, concretely, what do we do? Uh, we do that since more than 30 years, Melex is worldwide, and more than 20 years now in Sofia. Uh, we have a defined definition of the chip. Uh, that is the, the first part where we have to make sure that the chip fully meets, meet, meets our customers' needs. Uh, so we collect all the information on the chip function, operation condition, and uh, we integrate that into the definition of the chip. We design them, uh, the chip, the package, the software, uh, we'll come back to it. It's, uh, it's a work done by our system architects uh, that to develop the plan. The blocks are then implemented by design engineers using uh, all the elements needed for that to build a virtual circuit and uh, the mathematical, mathemat mathematical model that will make it work. We have today, just to give an idea, uh, more than 15 products under development in Sofia, uh, new product for customers on development. Then we lay out them, we arrange the uh, chip into, a, into a, a usable format by uh, the foundries. We also the manufacturing of the wafers, uh, and then we receive uh, the wafers to be tested and to be probed at first. Uh, we also develop the test solution at wafer level and at uh, chip, assembled chip level. Uh, and this test solution de development, being from machinery, being from tester, being from software, is also something that we are developing. We are for the packaging of the chip uh, in Asia mostly, like uh, most of the business today. And then we receive them for a final testing where we will be trimming them, calibrating them, testing them in temperature, in condition, in stimulus, and uh, delivering uh, to the customers. Uh, I mentioned about 1.7 billion chips done in, in Melexis. Sofia only is for 2021 is almost a billion by itself. So just to confirm the work mentioned by Sonia before, we are the biggest site of Melexis today. We have a worldwide team, uh, Melexis, and we have uh, approximately 1,800 people uh, worldwide with 750 days in Sofia. 50% of us are being engineers, are graduating engineers. This is visible on this slide with the number of boxes that you can see the three boxes of the major activities we have uh, in Sofia. And you will see a lot of engineering activities around design, layout, test, product, product verification, software. And so on, but also in operations, lean engineering, process engineering, equipment team, and in, in business foundation with the IT engineers that are also an important part of it. So we have a commonality with uh, between microelectronics and mechatronics in Malaxis uh, in, in our activities. The list is long you know, about engineers. I can even say that actually uh, our management is mainly engineers as well. Uh, 75% of our executive team is, is having a degree of engineer. Our CEO is an engineer. Uh, so it is, uh, it is just embedded in our work and in our nature. Um, Melexis is a tagline that you can see on the top left of the, of the screen, which is the website. Uh, Melexis, the tagline is inspired engineering. So just to emphasize on the engineering purpose that we have. Now to the very, we have a need for talented engineers that is growing, that is continuing growing, and uh, it's for us, but it's also worldwide and for the, for the whole society by itself. I will not pretend here to elaborate on a full thesis on the need of engineers uh, and the reasons why we need that, but just to give some elements that I could 
let's say, uh, extract from the different readings uh, and different interaction that they can have within people around. First, obviously, many businesses over the past decades have took decision to change their organization and to have more and more engineers in other roles and engineers. I just mentioned the management of small access, but it is also valid for sales. It's also valid for uh, even HR team are also with, with engineers in head. And the principle behind is uh, it's not e much easier when engineers talk to engineers. So that's a tendency that make a more opening for engineers, but also making the engineer uh, more uh, look for uh, resource. As well, the uh, automation robotization that is illustrated by the, the picture on the top right uh, is, of course, an element that makes it more and more complex. And basically, we are moving out uh, over the past decades on the, from the manual operations to uh, automatic operations. So where the needs of engineers in automation and mechatronic in, uh, in uh, development is increased as well and is continued to increase. High tech is getting everywhere. So coming back to microelectronics, if I take Malaxis, uh, the portfolio of Malaxis, you can see on the bottom left, uh, yeah, we use the chips everywhere today and it's continuously growing. Uh, we uh, have uh, a trend of having chips used in gaming, of course, but also in appliances or in uh, smart houses and stuff like that. Even in cars, uh, the car is also for us the, the driving uh, element. Today we have something like 18 chips per car uh, being assembled, and uh, and we can in some models exceed 150 of them. I think in the, in the latest Tesla model. Now we are also to face related to engineers, also to face environmental and societal challenges uh, that require innovation and solution. And engineers are developing that; are the one developing this. The last element I wanted to mention is on illustrated bottom right is uh, the, the, the situation in, in terms of population, in terms of our engineering crew. Uh, we are facing that the baby boomers are uh, retiring, not really now, and we need to replace this accumulated uh, experience and knowledge uh, and expertise with fresh blood. And in many cases, we see it ourselves in Malaxis. In many cases, many cases, we cannot replace one of these baby boomers with just one person. It has to sometimes be spread into two or even three other engineers. So it just by nature and by this replacement, just inflating the number of engineers that we need. And it's a very important step to do because it's a, a source of knowledge that is so precious to, 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 to keep on. This is this trend is also difficult because if we look to what's happily, actually happening, we have to face a number of attacks or a number of elements that are uh, making uh, this uh, engineer important. Uh, first of all, uh, the engineer studies, I heard it before uh, the, the break, but the engineer studies are difficult to reach a graduation. Uh, and it is competing with other paths uh, for good job uh, the, that are easier. Uh, there is even a belief or a flow illustrated on the top right here uh, that, uh, yeah, with the four months and a tutorial on YouTube, you can become a programmer and make a lot of money and enjoy your work. So it's that's what we have to compete with. And that's a reality that we have to, uh, to face and to be able to address. As well, we see, and we discussed that with Professor Angelov and Polov uh, in the cluster of my colleagues, we see also a number of engineers that are graduating but not staying with us. They are moving in other disciplines. So that's what is mentioned in the, in, on the bottom left. 30 to 50 percent are working something else than, than electronic or microwave today. And this is a trend that is also seen in other countries. It's not a big game problem. It's in other countries the same. Many of the engineers are, are not uh, staying within the domain. Another element related to the instability uh, of the business in the fast growing country globalization of the world, there is movement of companies between countries and it creates instability and creating a kind of fear within students and parents to embrace careers where it can be the pursuit. So it's not helping there. And the last but the least on the right, on the bottom right is related to the population. And here is the curve of Bulgaria where we see that we have a 
a population that is not renewing at the pace that, uh, that, that it is uh, in, a, in a healthy way. Recent numbers from census were published, so we have less people uh, in, in the year, and this will not help into uh, renewing our, our, our team. So this must be taken as a, as a priority for Malaxis. We take it as a priority, but the whole sector, the whole microeconomic sector has to take it as a priority. With or without EU CHIP Act, doesn't matter. It's, we have to face this if we want to uh, continue developing ourselves. Some ideas. Again, I'm not going to make a thesis out of it, or I'm not going to, it's not, a, I'll say, a rocket science, but just important element I wanted to mention here. First, about transparency and clarity on the sector. We have to clarify, we have to be transparent of what is being done and who is doing what and what are the sectors, that are, what is in the sector, what is the, the job that we are doing, what are we doing, what are we aiming. Second, is about unity. It's so important, and today is a good example, uh, that the, let's say the four key players in these domains are working together jointly. Authorities, education, research, and industry. All of them have to unite efforts, and they have to work together to have one common plan. Even in Bulgaria, I mean, we have, it's even more in Bulgaria because we have, a, let's say, not a necessarily very large country, so we have to unite force to get it through and not to to play uh, in parallel path because it will just divide our effort and lead to less results. And the third element to say is about the purpose. It's, uh, it's uh, many studies shows it. We have uh, we we, we have to create a, a view on the purpose of our jobs. What are we creating? We are engineers. We are creating solutions. We are creating uh, systems. We are solving issues. And we have to create this view and this link to the how. Engineers are changing the world. That's basically since a uh, century like that. And it has to it, we have to continue it and make it clear. We have to face the reality that we are having now the Gen Z, Generation Z coming to work. Uh, in four years, they will be 30% of the whole workforce. Uh, and this generation has, okay, I have a number of definition or a number of elements that is driving them. And one of the reasons related to business is that they want to solve social problems. They want to do something that is relevant. They don't want to do a job for a job. They don't want to do a layout here of the chip because it's uh, nice to do a layout, but they want to know where it goes. Um, but okay, we face this and basically all, the, all our technology and our chips are helping to face this kind of technology. In temperature sensing, for example, in Texas, we have a wireless, uh, sorry, a contactless temperature sensor that helped into monitoring temperature in the distant way, which was so important during COVID time. So it's uh, just uh, an element, but also in uh, in all uh, in systems like uh, respirators and ventilators, where we had uh, we had devices including that that uh, latch and switch, for example, that were playing a crucial role into these demands, into these components. Just one sentence to conclude, uh, I think most on time. Uh, a recent, uh, the, um, to conclude one sentence, we need to solve a number of societal challenges and engineers, micro engineers are a must to do so. So we have to take this as a priority, all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Koa, for this uh, really great insight about the and that you raise um, the topic about the talent. Of course, when we talk about technology, uh, the uh, purpose uh, for us all as a community is, of course, to increase and inspire more people going on to choose engineering career. Thank you again for being here with us and share such a. Uh, great know-how and thank you for being uh, on board with us today. And our next presenter is Mr. Simeon Kostudinov, uh, who is the manager of Global Foundries Bulgaria, who will share with us more about the anatomy of the chip. So please warm welcome, Mr. Kostudinov.
Здравейте! На мен се пада удоволствието днес да разкажа за анатомията на един чип, но преди да започна да говоря за чипове, искам да ви покажа един автомобил. Той се движи с 100 милиона км в час, изразходва 20 мл гориво на 100 км, тежи само 50 грама. Бихте изминали разстоянието до Луната за 13 секунди. Звучи доста фантастично и нереално, нали? Така би изглеждал съвременния автомобил обаче, ако автомобилната индустрия следваше тенденциите на развитие в електрониката. Но да видим как това развитие промени всъщност компютрите. В ляво е показан нововведения през 1950 година компютър ЕНИАК. Той прави революционен скок в ефективността на изчисляване на данни. Успява да изчисли траекторията на движещо се тяло за около 30 секунди, като същите тези изчисления са отнемали 20 часа на един човек. Така, този компютър с размери колкото малка къща е успявал да замени 2400 човека в сложни изчисления. Консумирал електроенергия като за 50 домакинства и е тежал колкото 10 автомобила. Днес, около 70 години по-късно, след поредица от технологични пробиви, Съвременният процесор прави същите изчисления стотици хиляди пъти по-бързо. Обира се в дланта на ръката ви, консумира електроенергия, колкото една електрическа кружка и струва 10 хиляди пъти по-малко от ЕНИАК. Освен компютрите, това развитие е променило и телекомуникациите. Телефон с шайба е класическия начин за провеждане на разговори на дълги и на кратки разстояния. Дълго време то е разпознаваем от мнозина от нас. Представете ли си нещо забързано ежедневие, да трябва да се разберете за кратка среща с приятел от предния ден или за да се чуете по телефона, да трябва да се приберете вкъщи, да изчакате до вечерта, когато той се прибере от работа и да му се обадите. Доста непрактично, нали? Но въпреки, че е толкова разпознаваем, не всяко домакинство имаше домашен телефон преди повече от 30 години. През 80-те години на пазара се появява и първия клетъчен телефон, който е дори още по-недостъпен от телефона с шайба. Той струва 6000 долара и тежи около килограм, не случайно, но си пряко от тухлата. Въпреки, че минава през доста разновидности, телефонът запазва своята основна функция дълго време, а тя е именно предаване на гласови сигнали. От тогава, през 90-те години, Именно телефона с шайба става проводник на един изцяло нов подход за предаване на информация. Този звук е познат на хората на моята възраст и на малко по-големите. Започнахме да предаваме и данни по телефонната линия през 90-те години. Да, лакодемите ни даваха възможност да сърфираме в интернет, макар и бавно, и можехме да свалим любимата си песен за около 20 минути. Освен това ни гарантираха и скандал с съседа, ако ползвам общ телефонна линия с дуплекс, тъй като докато ние сърфираме в интернет, той не може да говори по телефона. Днес технологията се развива до такава степен, че в джоба си имаме бежичен телефон, който обединява изчислителната мощност на 50 000 компютъра като ЕНИАК. 5G свързаността ни дава възможност да гледаме филми с резолюция 4K в реално време. Любимата си песен можем да свалим за една секунда. Освен това, на практика разполагаме с неограничено облачно пространство, което да качваме снимките, които сме запечатали, с камера с висока разделителна способност, която ни е бонус. Всичко това за няколко стотин лева. Какво се крие ключът към този прогрес обаче? Всъщност е предсказан още от през 57-ма година от Ричард Файнман, по-късно обединен в емперична зависимост от Гордън Мур, ключът се крие в миниатюризацията. И както е предвидил Гордън Мур, на всеки две години броят транзистори на единица площ в една интегрална схема се увеличават два пъти. Пропорционално ще намалява себестоеността за производство на всеки един транзистор. Всъщност тези транзистори играят ролята на електронни ключове, които извършат изчисленията в една интегрална схема. И ако се върнем пак към компютъра ЕНИАК, неговият основен градивен елемент също е бил 
тази електронна лампа, която е била с размерите на кружка за фар и горе-долу е била толкова, то е приличала на, на също. През 1971 година електронните ключове са заменени с транзисторни и на площа, която първоначално е заемала електронната лампа в ЕНИАК, сме можели да произведем 40 000 електронни ключа, които имат същите функции като електронната лампа. За да ви иллюстрирам колко е бил голям всеки един от тези транзистори, съм показал едно насекомо. Всеки транзистор е бил по-малък от главата на тази балха. Днес технологията се развива до такава степен, че на същата площ, която е заемала лампата, вече можем да произведем 160 милиарди транзистора. Всеки един транзистор е с размери, колкото познати ни през последните няколко години вече, коронавирус. Аритметиката е проста. Колкото повече транзистори имаме на единица площ, толкова повече изчисления можем да направим за единица време. Или, грубо казано, компютърът ни е по-мощен. Но как успяваме да произведем толкова много транзистори? Благодаря. Как успяваме да произведем толкова много и толкова малки транзистори на едно място? Бих оприличил стъпките за произвеждане на една интегрална схема с готварска рецепта за приготвяне на торта. Както тортата, така и чиповете са изградени на няколко нива. Важно е да имаме правилните материали в точните пропорции и трябва прецизно да следим температурата на всяко едно ниво. Ако за приготвяне на торта, обаче, дори по сложна рецепта, следваме 30 стъпки, при производството на една интегрална схема стъпките са стотици. Ако трябва да прекараме един час в кухнята, за да направим торта, то силицевата пластина преминава през технологични стъпки в фабриката за около 2 месеца. И не на последно място, фурната, с която разполагаме в фабриката, струва няколко стотици милиона. Знаете ли какво е това? Точно така. Това е човешки косъм под микроскоп. За да иллюстрирам прецизността на машините, които се използват за разработване и производство на интегрални схеми, съм показал този напречен срез на косъм. Ако всеки един транзистор в една интегрална схема от последно поколение заменим с буква, следвайки производствения процес от фабриката, можем да изпишем цял том от енциклопедия Британика на напречния срез на този косъм. Говорим за такава прецидност. Но да видим на практика как протичат производствените процеси в фабриката и какъв е пътя на един чип от шепа пясък до компютъра ви в следващото видео. You are about to experience a fascinating journey through the clean rooms of the semiconductor industry. See integrated circuits in the making at one of Global Foundry's chip factories. Let our experts walk you through the nanocosmos of the atom. In the beginning is the circuit diagram. At design centers around the globe, experts collaborate to design circuit diagrams, sophisticated integrated circuits like microprocessors, high graphic processors, and wireless communications ICs. The next step is manufacturing. The disk substrates for the microchips are made from quartz sand and are called silicon wafers. To make these wafers, a huge monocrystal is drawn from purified silicon melt. The result is a perfect silicon lattice into which the transistors will later be fitted. However, impurities pose a threat to these flawless silicon crystals. Completely free of dust, the silicon disks arrive at the clean room. Here, 25 wafers are packed into each hermetically sealed container and sent off on a journey that will take them through hundreds of manufacturing steps.
photolithographic techniques transfer the circuit structures to the wafers, rather like slide projection. The key to this whole process is a solid mastery of light. The silicon disc is spin coated with a photosensitive resist. UV light transfers the circuit structures depicted on a mask to the wafer. The exposed parts of the resist are soluble and are removed by a developer. The transferred structures can now be used as a template. The unprotected parts of the water surface are etched away. The structures of billions of small current switches are generated on each wafer, tiny transistors. From the photolithographic stage, wafers move on to the ion implantation, where the electrical properties of the transistors will be specified. First, dopant atoms are injected into the silicon structures. These atoms then distribute randomly in the silicon lattice. At high temperatures, the doping atoms become flexible and take on a fixed position in the atomic structure. The complexity of manufacturing tiny transistors requires a clean room as big as two soccer pitches. dominates the next process step. The Feist interconnect wires link up billions of separate transistors to form integrated circuits. Before the copper is poured into the trenches for the interconnects, a barrier layer is applied. It helps to avoid short circuits and guarantees reliability. The trenches are then filled with copper. Finally, the excess copper is ground down to the edges of the trenches. This insulates each interconnect from the others. A microchip made of copper wiring established Global Foundries as the first company in the world to adopt copper in volume production. A foundation for the state-of-the-art multi-core processors that Global Foundries is introducing today in all product areas. To keep us on the leading edge of the world's chip makers, electron microscopes constantly monitor every step in the manufacturing process down to the atomic structures of each individual transistor. In two months, the wafer is ready. Huge integrated circuits consisting of conductors with a length of multiple kilometers link up 100 billion transistors on numerous levels. And that, in a space no larger than a fingernail. Благодаря ви за вниманието. Благодаря, благодаря на Симеон Костадинов. I would like to draw attention that he is a good example of our engineering uh, human resource building, let's say. He was a student with our uh, faculty of electronics, uh, master student of uh, microelectronics, and now he's a prospective young manager in Global Foundries, one of the number five, top five companies in the business worldwide. So, yeah, this is especially targeted to our uh, young audience, our current and future students. So, yeah, the path forward is 
clean. So, next is a very important presentation. It will be delivered by our uh, partners from Infinia in Austria, Mr. Martin Mischitz, who is uh, uh, very active in uh, cooperation between Infinia and external parties such as universities. It was a pleasure to have a lot of contacts uh, with him personally and his team in uh, Austria. So now the floor is his and it will be our pleasure and my personal to hear the presentation of yours. Please, the floor is yours. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hello, George. Hello, Limita. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present here. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a pleasure to give you a short insight into Infineon technology. Maybe it's a bit uh, short, so if everybody, uh, if further information is required, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, first, I would like to give you a little insight into Infineon uh, as a corporate. Um, Infineon is um, known to be a uh, um, global player on the semiconductor market. We are having around 50,000 employees and our products are mainly located or can be attributed to automotive uh, industry, to power management, energy efficiency technologies and Internet of Things. Our products are strongly contributing to decarb decarbonization and digitization um, um, as global there are trends that are very important, not only since um, a few uh, months, as we know, but already for a long time and in very um, important market areas like automotive, uh, electronics, power electronics and micro uh, microcontrollers, for example, we are holding top market positions. Um, to give you a few key numbers of our company, you can see here um, in the last year, we had a um, um, we had a revenue of uh, around um, eleven billion euros and a, a result margin of roughly nineteen percent. Uh, our fifty thousand employees are located uh, in Europe, in Asia, and in America, and um, we have roughly not only nineteen manufacturing locations worldwide but also a huge number of R&D locations um, distributed to all these continents. Uh, to give you a little insight into, um, into the big applications of Infineon, um, our products go into energy efficiency, uh, serving mo uh, mobility, security, Internet of Things and big data applications. Uh, here, for example, um, energy efficiency, um, we are providing products um, that help um, and are applied in power generation of renewable energy resources, not only, also classical energy, uh, electrical energy generation, of course, uh, is, is, um, is our big market, but nowadays um, all renewable energy uh, applications are, um, of course, key areas for our products. Energy transmission and distribution um, is um, strongly dependent on energy efficient uh, power electronic devices uh, and Infineon is supplying uh, very many of them. Energy storage and energy usage in a very efficient way are also those areas uh, down to your personal application that you have in your uh, individual household, um, will you will find our products. Uh, and I'm very sure that um, most of you are using Infineon products in your everyday life without knowing that. Um, mobility as a huge sector and as a, hu a huge um, factor in our society uh, is also a strong market for us, not only uh, electromobility, but even before that, Infineon was serving already for many years um, applications in um, electronic applications in, in classical um, 
also combustion engines, combustion motors, uh, so classical mobility, but electromobility now even is more uh, making use of our products. Charging infrastructure is every, uh, also a key application uh, as well as autonomous driving where uh, sensors of different in different areas um, are used uh, that are developed uh, and produced by engineers. Uh, beside that, of course, everything which makes our uh, situation as a passenger inside the a car more attractive uh, will also be supplied by Infineon. Um, in the security area, our devices um, are used for embedded solutions in order to um, improve the connectivity uh, between different devices, mobile devices, uh, very important authentication of Internet of Things applications are, are a key area smart card applications um, and very many um, you know, features in the in industry, but also in the, um, in the personal application where data transmission is used. Mm -hmm. um, Internet of Things already mentioned is rather a younger market of Infineon a strongly growing one. So everything which is related to human machine interactions um, um, in the consumer area, as well as in the industrial area um, and everywhere where data and communication infrastructure is required, our products are supporting them with different uh, um, applications from sensor, microcontroller, um, and even to the uh, power semiconductor applications. MOSFET uh, solutions as well. To give you an overview where we are located, our um, the center of, uh, of Infineon is located, uh, of the corporate is located in Munich, but there is no production, therefore you cannot see it. But in Europe, we have um, production sites in, uh, in Germany, um, Regensburg and Dresden are two locations with, with uh, large factories. Um, and here we are distributing between front-end manufacturing and back-end manufacturing, so wafer production in the front-end and chip pro uh, package production in the back-end, um, so it's is distributed. And um, in, um, furthermore, there is Warstein in Germany, Zeglet in Hungary, and uh, Filach in Austria are big locations. And as you can see, a group of factories are already also located in the US and Mexico and uh, different countries um, in Asia. We, have, we are happy to serve very many um, large players on the market and have them as our customers. And you will usually find their labels uh, on your products uh, and you will not uh, find, unless you are opening your devices, that there are a lot of Infineon chips inside. Um, inside the corporate, this uh, international corporate, Infineon Austria, uh, plays a special role as a very large legal entity inside the corporate. So we have about 10% of all employees um, of, of the corporate um, and have, uh, for example, uh, two design centers uh, in Austria, one in, in Linz, one in Graz. Another one is in Villach, uh, but Villach is uh, actually the headquarter of Infineon in Austria and also the, the, the largest location. Um, containing not only design, R&D, but also production facilities, and I will show you a bit more in the next slides, but also business responsibility, so marketing and also IT. So the location in Villach, which is in the very south of Austria, close to the Slovenian and Italian border, um, we are concentrating um, a lot of features uh, of our corporate um, um, and are very happy to be able to provide here short communication ways between these different um, disciplines in order to guarantee the success of the company. As you can see here, um, Infineon Austria alone is spending roughly 500 million euros for research and development per year. So these are the numbers for, for 2021. Um, this means 13% of our uh, turnover is used for research and development. Um, we are very happy 
to expand the production where we, have, where we were very happy to expand our production capacity, as you can see here um, as a gallery view of our site, with a new highly automated fab which went into production one year ago. So that's, this was an investment of 1.6 billion euros, um, doubling the production uh, uh, capacity of, uh, of our tap here in, 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 in Fülach. Um, and this, is, um, this building, as you can see here, is a highly automated manufacturing uh, factory for 300 millimeter silicon-based wafers. Um, uh, but this also is, uh, so we are not only known to provide here silicon-based uh, applications, but also uh, wide band gap applications. Um, as is it, it is well known, um, these three materials um, are at the moment on the market uh, in order to serve many, many applications with their specific features. And Infineon is uh, not only um, Infineon Philax, so in Austria, is not only able to provide here access to this technology in silicon, but also silicon carbide and gallium nitride. Uh, these new um, white band gap materials are uh, known to offer very interesting um, uh, and beneficial properties, um, especially in the area of energy efficiency, um, uh, helping not only um, the, um, uh, so helping to support here new solutions which are smaller, um, uh, losing less energy, uh, having uh, less um, cooling effort. So a lot of consequences that a small, effective, more effective chip can lead to more lean, small and cheaper solutions in many, many areas of different products. Um, Silicon carbide is um, one of the key competences of Infineon Austria in Villach here. For more than 20 years, we are now active in this area and uh, we are still, of course, um, uh, so silicon carbide is a quite new area, but still subject of a lot of research and development, especially to make it accessible in, in high volume production. Um, and uh, this is going on at Infineon Villach. Um, we have a very long tradition, um, not only in Finland as a corporate, but especially also in Finland and Austria, uh, to work together with research partners um, for a long time, mainly focusing in Middle Europe. Uh, universities, research institutions, other companies are working together with us in bilateral projects, but also in many, very many funded projects. Um, and uh, in Finland now is uh, continuing this uh, tradition uh, in order to reach out also in the context of the project uh, IPSE for microelectronics, which many of you might already know. Um, IPSE on microelectronics is an initiative um, of the European Commission in order to uh, support here uh, all activities uh, that help to make um, Europe more competitive, uh, to make it more sovereign in technological know-how, uh, bringing high-tech uh, products to the market, a tendency which is not only going on in Europe, as we all know, but also in, in other areas, the US and China, of course, and this initiative um, is supporting uh, companies that uh, bring, um, that bring innovative technologies made in Europe fast to volume production and to the market, on one hand, and in Virginia and Austria's case, these are, um, these are uh, technology developments in the area of silicon, silicon carbide, and gallium nitride, um, use supporting energy efficiency applications and electromobility. Beside that, there is another big uh, motivation for, um, for this IPSE activity is to strengthen the European network inside the industry, but also between the industry and the academia, um, and um, so we are very happy uh, to um, exploit now and explore now new contacts um, all over Europe. And um, um, Professor Angelov already mentioned that we are already in uh, a longer contact now 
looking for corporations with, um, with Theosophia and also other universities in um, Bulgaria. Um, and one part of these uh, activities is called spillover. Uh, and what we are doing here is offering to uh, new partners in academia uh, opportunities for collaboration with us in the area of R&D, uh, but also in the, uh, in, in the, in the industry sector, uh, in, in this um, supply chain um, where small and medium enterprises, startups, but also la larger enterprises are um, suggested to cooperate with Ingenia. So we are very open here and looking for new opportunities uh, in order to strengthen the, the situation of the universities on one hand, but on the, also on companies on the other hand, at their location, so in their home country. Um, um, in, and we are very open to uh, proposals. Um, in principle, of course, one activity is uh, directed towards uh, uh, the, the, the area of talents, of young talents, uh, to support them with um, not only with, 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 with partnership uh, projects uh, for, via the university, but also directly uh, offering internships, uh, PhD and master um, scholarships for the people working at their home university. So, for example, in Bulgaria, um, at their home university, uh, but also offering lectures, um, teaching of Infineon experts coming to your places, um, bring hardware and uh, also training material uh, via different channels. Yeah, so uh, this is covering a wide range of competences where we want to find out where are the best opportunities, uh, where the fields of studies of the universities. So Infineon is here covering really a wide range of the natural science, uh, of, of industrial engineering subjects, uh, material science, mechatronics, um, very many different um, competence fields at the universities can support here our fields of applications at Infineon. As you can see here, named just a few of them as a North Line exhausted list. This is the uh, point for, to end, uh, and I hope I could give you a short overview about um, Infineon Austria and our activities um, um, and also the offerings that are, of course, to be explained more in detail, also by our homepage or direct content. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Martin. It's impressive. I want once again to stress that it's key for us, uh, your partnership and your deeper involvement with our ecosystem. And I would like to say from my personal impressions since the, last, since the past year, that in fact, everything that Martin Michel said is true. This is a really open company. This is not just work, this is their passion of working. We started some activities, they're pretty open. We have worked in our experience with a lot of foreign companies, but Infineon is a good example for combining the commercial part uh, with the R&D and the open attitude towards uh, cooperation. So thank you very much. And I'm happy that you are on board today with, our, with your presentation. Thank so you very much. So next is ISML in Netherlands, in the Netherlands, Belislava Ignatova. It's my pleasure that she mm, changed her agenda in order to uh, participate in today's uh, event. So, Belislava, it's my pleasure to introduce you to our audience, both in person here and online, and to give you the floor for a presentation of ISML the world global and monopolist leader in lithography. The floor is yours. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me to represent uh, ASML uh, on this forum. Yeah, thanks again for uh, letting me uh, this opportunity to represent ASML uh, as a company. 
On uh, my front slide here, uh, you see uh, an illustration of the obvious fact that uh, chips are omnipresent in our daily life. Um, it is also undeniable fact that no chip could be produced without the ASMR technology in between. And today, the goal of my presentation is to open up a little bit to, towards the answer uh, what puts ASML in such a unique position in the semiconductor industry? Before doing that, I would like to um, introduce myself. Apparently, I'm Bulgarian. I'm um, educated in uh, Sofia University in Faculty of Physics quite some years ago. I also defended the PhD in the uh, Institute of Electronics Bulgarian Academy of Sciences. Uh, continued as a postdoc in Belgium um, in a number of institutions, the University of Antwerp, and also the Nuclear Research Center uh, in Gale. Um, that followed by a, a position in, as a senior scientist in Fraunhofer Center for Nanotechnologies in Dresden. Uh, where we also collaborated with uh, Infineon as a company, as uh, presented uh, by the previous speaker. And since 2008 till now, I'm uh, working in ASML uh, on various technical positions, uh, as well as a project. Uh, and my latest assignment is uh, to contribute to business improvement uh, uh, in order to create uh, increased quality of uh, ASML product. And now um, I'll start with uh, uh, introducing ASML. If I can. Yeah. ASML, best way to introduce is to show a small video. Yeah, so uh, what is the position of ASML as a company on the global market? Yeah, uh, on the slide here, um, shown 50 top technology companies contributing to the semiconductor ecosystem and generating about 500 billion dollar per year. These are the results of 2020. You see here on top the position of ASML as a leader in semiconductor equipment producer um, uh, with about five billion dollar uh, per year. And uh, the other companies next by Apple, Microsoft, famous companies. However, they work in a different um, uh, region of the semiconductor industry. How did it start? Um, in 1984, uh, ASML was uh, founded as a spin-off of Philips, um, as you see in a garage, and it's uh, similar to other companies. It's well-known fact that humble beginnings make for a very strong can-do mentality. 
At the beginning, there were 31 employees only. Uh, yeah, however, beginning in a garage is not a guarantee of success yet. It took decades of perseverance in order to break through the market. And where is nowadays ASML? Um, this is a picture of the campus in Veldhoven. Now the company reaches out to three continents. Uh, this is the main campus uh, uh, where you also see on the picture uh, on, in the bottom uh, the, the new EUV factory uh, built up uh, in order to produce the latest technology machines. Um, it is the biggest, Europe's biggest uh, the tech company by market cap nowadays. Now, what brings us there? Uh, let's talk about technology. And uh, here, the roadmap of um, the many uh, machines produced uh, throughout the years. Uh, starting from the 80s with pass machines, different types of. In the 90s, the, the twin scan technologies uh, broke through uh, with new inventions uh, going through phases of XT and NXT machines. And from 2000 on, the UV technology started to be developed with now the new kit in the box, uh, uh, high NA EUV machines with resolution less than eight nanometers. Uh, to make that possible, Technology-wise, we had to move mountains. And I would like to mention some of the key innovation uh, factors that were making possible all this uh, roadmap. Of course, first factor here is the increase, uh, decreasing the wavelength throughout the ultraviolet range down to EUV, um, extreme UV light with wavelength 13.5 since 2011 for the UV technology, which was a real breakthrough. Next key innovation factor, introducing the immersion lens that made possible imaging much better and uh, with much better parameters uh, uh, of the, the final image, so using water in between, that was a, a key innovation breakthrough for the twin scan technology. Then I would like to mention also uh, key changes that brought um, the step between DUV to EUV lithography. There are three main, main uh, changes uh, using a mirror optics, uh, then uh, introducing a new light source uh, and uh, introducing a large vacuum chamber without uh, which uh, the UV technology would not be possible. But what remains to be said is uh, what makes it possible? Uh, and there are two factors that are worth to mention. The um, a huge investment in R&D, so it's more than 2.5 billion per year that ASML invests. And then the other factor that I would like to still mention uh, is equally important, the great people that are working together in an integrated supply chain so we have about 70,000 people in the ASML ecosystem, 35 people working in ASML, employees, uh, 13,000 R&D, 3,000 in uh, uh, having a PhD or doctor degree, and uh, I'm proud to be one of them. And uh, last but not least, fact to mention is uh, the open innovation from design to manufacturing. And here it is about the collaboration system that ASML has created with customers, peers, academic partners, 
uh, such as uh, Technical University of Eindhoven and many others, and also all the suppliers that are contributing to our products. Thank you for your attention, and I'm really very sorry about the technical problems that that my presentation was interrupted. It's okay. Thank you very much for your time and your efforts. In fact, only in the last part, there were a couple of portions that we didn't hear, so the overall picture is clear for our audience. So thank you once again, and I hope that we'll start now uh, regular contacts, not only at the level of presentations, but also at a technical level. So once again, thank you very much. Okay, we proceed now with our next speaker from Renesas. Please, it's nice that you're here. Aneta Lyubanova, please, you may present yourself and your company. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, we can use this uh, uh, yeah, just microphone. Second, yeah. Um, so for the next slide, I wish this. Yeah, this is next slide. This is previous slide. This is the pointer. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's um, a pleasure for me to be with you today. My name is Anita Lubanova, and um, so I lead the HR uh, team of Renaissance in Bulgaria, and I also hold responsibilities uh, for regional HR for uh, Bulgaria, Switzerland, and Israel. Um, so basically, um, who are we? Who is Renaissance? Renesas is headquartered in Tokyo, Japan, and uh, we are a global leader in providing um, of uh, microcontrollers. Um, so we have um, approximately more than 21,000 um, employees worldwide spread over um, more than 30 countries. Um, we hold uh, approximately 20,000 patents and field applications and uh, have revenue for 2021 uh, for about 994 and 4 billion yen. So, um, Renaissance was born in 2002 um, when three major uh, technology giants uh, from Japan, um, in the uh, name of um, Hitachi, Mitsubishi Electric, and NEC, decided to uh, merge their uh, semiconductor businesses into one company, forming Renaissance. Uh, the company started operating in uh, 2010 and uh, began expanding its footprint in Silicon Valley by the acquisition of Intrasil in 2017 and um, then later on with the acquisition of IDT in 2019. In 2021, uh, Renaissance has acquired Dialog Semiconductor, expanding its footprint in Europe. And later that year, uh, we acquired Sleno. Now the journey continues with the acquisition of uh, Realty AI in 2022 and the definitive agreement of acquiring Stradium. What is our purpose? So our purpose is to make our lives easier. Um, in order to make human lives easier, our products provide um, advanced driver assistance systems, um, alternative uh, fuel vehicles, state-of-the-art medical devices, uh, robotics, and um, uh, many more um, products to uh, enhance the, the way people live.
what is the culture within the Renaissance. So our culture is a guideline of conduct that is spread and shared among the Renaissance group and all our employees. Um, our culture and philosophy is to be transparent, agile, global, innovative, and entrepreneurial. It's key to be transparent and the employees to understand the leadership team strategy and policy and um, to be informed regarding all the different topics that are coming up within the different units. In the world we uh, live in, we need to take really um, fast and prompt decisions, so agility uh, is uh, very important. So, you know, um, Renaissance operates in global markets. We have uh, global clients and partners and competitors. So um, we need to uh, be able to talk into um, an advanced language and not only that, but be able to understand each other um, in alternative ways by communicating through data and numbers. Innovation is really a key and a heart of um, a microelectronics company and the world we live in. So, um, it is really important to um, have the opportunity of our employees to be really innovative and to um, be creative and improve their work. Um, about entrepreneurial, why is it important? Because if uh, each and every one of us, the employees, takes um, his job as it is for his own business, we will be able to really uh, stand for our results and look forward into the brighter future. Going forward, uh, sustainability is uh, really a great and big topic for Renaissance. Uh, it is in the heart of what we do and into the um, different segments of the environment, the, the social network, and also the governance. I'm skipping the company data, as uh, we already discussed that, but I just wanted to present you with the global network of uh, Renaissance. Um, so, uh, with the um, dark blue dots, you can really see the global sales network operating across more than 20 countries and uh, with the light blue dots are marked the um, R&D centers. Um, so in the, um, I think it's seen pink in this um, slide, so with the pink you can really um, uh, mark our 12 manufacturing sites across the, the globe. As per Gardner 2021 survey, Renaissance holds uh, number one market share of microcontroller units within the uh, automotive market. This combined, combined with the um, uh, industrial makes number place number two or uh, number two market share uh, with 16% of the combined um, automotive and industrial and A number three with the total semi with 7%. So our mission here is to develop a safer, safer healthier, greener, and um, smarter world by providing intelligence to our four, four focus of growth or segments, automotive, industrial, infrastructure, and IoT. Here are the uh, four verticals of our activities where you can uh, really see the, the, the products and focus areas of our business. Jumping to EMEA, um, where Renaissance has more than 2,300 employees uh, in 19 countries. Our headquarters in um, EMEA is uh, situated in Dusseldorf, Germany. So, slightly uh, transitioning to Bulgaria. Um, 
So Bulgarian entity was established in 2008 um, as part of the uh, Central Mitrotonic Dresden, with headquarters in Varna. Uh, in 2012, we added a new location to um, our um, activities in Bulgaria by opening our office in Sofia. 2015, uh, the company was acquired by IDT. And in 2019, um, Renesas acquired IDT. Oh, sorry. The profile of uh, Renesas Design Bulgaria, or what we do uh, over here, is uh, design and development of integrated circuits. And uh, the design teams here are more, mainly focused in uh, development of automatic automotive sensing products. Um, the uh, products that are developed within Bulgaria are sold in million parts all over the world. We continue our sustainable growth in Bulgaria over the years and um, with the great support of the management we are constantly expanding our activities and also expanding the team. So um, we are actively recruiting and um, we are um, seeing the future in cooperation like we are just talking today um, together with the um, support and um, uh, cooperation between, between universities, uh, the business and the government. So we are strengthening our relationships with the technical universities in Bulgaria. We are offering um, long-term internship programs, which are um, six months or more, in both our design centers, Varna and Sofia, where we are giving the opportunity of young and talented um, people, students, to um, have the opportunity to learn and um, practice in a corporate environment, and later on, be part of our team. So, um, we're really looking forward to a joint science uh, project with the technical universities in Bulgaria and also abroad. Thanks very much for the attention. Thank you very much. Our next presentation is uh, from Spesima, right? Uh, could you please, yeah, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, Spesima is a uh, well-known and uh, long-established company in mechatronics, also one of the backbone companies of the cluster of mechatronics. So, yeah, Hello. it's my pleasure to give you the floor and present Spesima in the cluster. Thank you. Please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Ivail Savov. Uh, I'm a manager of the service department in the SIMA, Jim uh, Okay, our company uh, have uh, experience more than 30 years, which means we are 33 years old company, and we have a um, production facilities more than 4,000 square meter. We have more than 25 uh, members, uh, staff, which are working in the SEMA. Most of them, they are uh, engineers, doctors, and uh, guys which are, know how to make a automat automatization and machines. And we have more than 25 patents and trademarks that is uh, some of our awards that we had in the past and now. Uh, from 2004, we have an award for the innovation company. The same uh, award we are receiving from 2012 and 2018. Uh, also, we have an award from uh, German Bulgarian Economy uh, 2006 and gold medal in 2007, I think, and 2012 on the 
International Technical Fair in Plovdiv. Our distributor, which are on the world wide, we are working together with Frey, Frey Group and our partner Metal Press, which is for Turkey. Our suppliers, that's not all of our suppliers, but some of our suppliers that we are working together. You can see there is a companies which are famous in the world. What we are making. <clears throat> First of all, we are making uh, automatization for die casting industry. Uh, we have also a peripheral equipment for the cells which are uh, mostly for the die casting industry. We have a custom automatization for uh, different customers in the world. And we are integrator of the ABB, Kuka and Fanuc robots. Also, we are making our own control system for the uh, 6X robots. For the die casting automatization, we have uh, three main types of uh, machines which we are producing dosing manipulators, extracting manipulators, and spraying manipulators. These three machines are working uh, together on one die casting. Uh, machine and they are producing 24 hours, seven days a week. First, dosing machines, we have a different size, different type of uh, dosing machines, linear rotary uh, dosing machines. We can make a dosing with accuracy, accur uh, a great dosing from Plus minus 2% till plus minus 0.5%. Uh, we have a melt capacity for dosing from 0 0.5 kilos to 30 kilos and uh, safety feeling functions about uh, these machines because it's a very dangerous, we are working with uh, melted alloy. Extraction units from three to six axis extraction units, which are working with die casting machines. Uh, ground fixed load capacity of the extraction unit can be from 1.5 kilo to 50 kilos. And we have also part control, part sensors, and we are uh, uh, we are making also own reapers for every customer needs. We, we can make also uh, part controls with the uh, infra sensors, with cameras, with everything that is now on the market. The, the, sec the last one, which we are using in, in the die casting cell, that is a spraying manipulator. They are uh, making a lubrication and cleaning of the molds of the die casting machine. Uh, we have a one axis, two axis spraying manipulators. We have a pneumatic uh, manipulators, which the main movement of the manipulators are, is made by the pneumatic cylinders. We uh, have also with server drive and different crisis uh, of, of zones for spraying and cleaning of the die tool. Uh, we are producing for this uh, manipulator. Uh, Spraying heads, which are uh, uh, on the model principle, which means that every customer can uh, make own decision about the form of the uh, spraying head which he needs and uh, about uh, his uh, production. Um, that is part of the spraying devices. We have uh, tanks for the liquid, which can be different types. Uh, there we have a diaphragma pumps, and we can re we can make a, also um, mixing of the water and the liquid with special dosing uh, dosatron systems. Uh, we are for the peripheral equipment. We are making also for the die casting cells. Uh, 
safe defense, cooling station, cooling tanks and uh, conveyors. That means we can close the cycle of every producer for die casting. That is our control, which we are using, RNC uh, control. Uh, we have a patent here for the Wi-Fi hand, hand panel pendant, which is uh, with this pendant, you, we, uh, we can control every of our units, which means with one panel, we can make a control for three or two or one unit, what, what we need. Uh, the software also is our. We have a building VPN client, a client diagnostic, which make our units very comfortable to, to make a service from distance. Doesn't matter in which point in the world is the customer. I say also, uh, from the beginning that we are making integration of uh, brand new ABB, Fan, Fanuc and Hooker robots and uh, we make also a, cust a custom automatization from the left side you can see that is a, a manipulator which is extracting uh, the rings from the vertical casting machines and from the, the right side that is a one palletizing uh, uh, robot which is working in one Bulgarian company, uh, Rubella Beauty. In the future, we will start and we have steps, we have made it steps with welding. And you can see that we have also a program which can make a simulation before we start to make a production. Not only with welding, we can make it also with the die casting cells. What we have, we have uh, what delivers Pesima. Pesima deliver uh, researching and de de development. We have a, a department which uh, make a, a construction of the machines, which make a, a design and everything. Uh, we have a, a after sales service. We have a training. We have installation commissioning. We do everything what is needed for the customer. First, what is important for us, for us, no matter, no matter what is the industry, we will help you to identify your needs. We have uh, more than three, 30 uh, countries in worldwide, worldwide, worldwide sorry, uh, that we uh, have uh, machines and a solution about the customers. Uh, we will carefully find the best solution for you and we guarantee the quality production. And we will provide the training and support for every company. That is uh, some of our customers that using our uh, machines and our automatization. Thank you, that was everything. Yes. Uh, thank you for the interesting presentation. So now we are having two more presentations for this panel. Next is Krasimir Trifonov from uh, RxM Engineering, it's a very interesting company with which we have a lot of successful stories in the recent years and not only the recent years, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I would like first to thank you, the organizers, uh, for inviting us to present our company uh, in front of you. Uh, special thanks to Professor uh, Kralov and uh, Professor Todorov, uh, who has given our opportunities to present what we are doing. I would like to say that uh, up to now we have been listening uh, about uh, global companies, uh, 
uh, worldwide companies uh, and uh, speaking for microelectronics. Now I'm going to present you a local company uh, located in, in Smolian, uh, which is focused in plastic injection molding. Uh, and why plastic injection molding is connected with microelectronics? This is because uh, plastics are like a skin uh, for human body uh, for microelectronics chips and uh, electronic modules. About the history of the company, uh, later at the end of the presentation, you are going to see a short video which represents uh, how the owner of the company started these activities in Smolian. The uh, company was uh, established in 1991. Why in Smolian? Because uh, Smolian uh, was a town of uh, very well developed in uh, tool making and mold making. Uh, and uh, at that time, when a lot of people had been jobless, uh, the, the owner of the company, who has been 23, 25 years old, uh, he, uh, he had been enough clever to collect these people and to start this activity, restart the industry again. Today, his son is uh, with us. And today, uh, in the company, we have uh, something like transition uh, between old generation and new generation. Uh, the company is working in the uh, main business sector of molding of plastic parts and tool making. And I would say that the company is a leader uh, in production of technical plastic products and precise tooling. Business to offer. We have three main manufacturing units. Uh, one is uh, injection molding uh, manufacturing unit with 100 injection molding machine, machines. Uh, speaking about the size of the company, uh, companies are uh, local and uh, relatively small for the global view, but from local perspective, uh, 100 injection molding machines is uh, something which is uh, not uh, very often to, to have on the market, even in, in Europe. To be a good producer of uh, plastic in injected parts, you must have a very good uh, equipped uh, tool shop and be very experienced in tool making. And uh, at the end, uh, we offer also uh, assemblies. We put electronic and uh, other mechanical parts in the plastic closures. Main, main products and markets. Uh, you see uh, low of uh, many small, small plastic parts that are going uh, in uh, soup modules together with electronics, cables, and at the end, all these uh, sub assemblies are going in the cars. We are a company certified uh, with automotive standards in, in plastic injection business. In Bulgaria especially, we are the only one certified in this standard. And we are giving very uh, precise parts. Probably 90% of the cars in the, in the Europe are equipped with our parts. The other sector in which we are producing plastic parts is a uh, power tool sector. Uh, on the market, uh, you, you will find uh, the big players like Makita and Bosch, and 80% of their parts are produced in Bulgaria. Uh, you see uh, on the slide uh, uh, one of them, just one of them, but we are producing uh, a million of them. The third sector in which we are working is electronic uh, electric sector. We are producing uh, many million of parts uh, for uh, power breaker switches and uh, many others you can find in, in your apartments or, or houses everywhere. You see on the slide uh, our customers and partners. On every sector we have three, three of the global leaders of the sectors. In, in automotive, we have a little bit more because in Bulgaria recent years, automotive sector uh, developed and a lot of companies from Germany 
they have uh, local branches to which we are delivering our parts. At the end, uh, again, uh, the parts are going to the OEMs uh, and cars. World map, uh, we are situated uh, in Bulgaria, in the south of Bulgaria, on the border of Greece. We have a very good uh, developed uh, logistic department. Uh, all our products we deliver with our departments to uh, not only to Bulgaria, but to, yeah, to all Europe, including uh, uh, Mexico and China. Okay, what we are offer from concept to mass production, uh, we have product development design, tool design, tool manufacturing, plastic part injection, and sub assemblies. Here we can see, you can see some of our partners. Uh, go to the next slide, please. Innovation is a very important part of uh, our development. We, we have a very successful project with the uh, Technical University of Sofia and Sofia Tech Park. Uh, and uh, we continue in this direction. The next slide, please. A state of the art tool shop. This is the heart of the, of the company when we are producing the toolings and molds. Uh, in which after that we are injecting plastic parts. The tool shop is one of the uh, best uh, in, in Bulgaria. Uh, recently we invested more than 8 million euro in new machines and equipment. Uh, in this slide we can see our injection molding uh, department. As I explained to you, uh, we have more than 100 machines. Uh, very well equipped with the modern peripheral equipment. We have uh, implemented 10 years now multi-component injection, which is a very specific process. Uh, also, we have uh, overmolding and uh, uh, centralized feeding system for the raw materials. Uh, what's interesting, we are proceeding more than 8,000 uh, uh, tons of plastic engineering uh, granulates per year, uh, mainly polyamide uh, with glass field. Next slide, please. Uh, Sub-assembly and printing uh, uh, department. Uh, we, we have uh, added value operations on plastics, uh, some sub-assembly modules and automatization. Uh, at the end, we are delivering to the customers uh, semi-finished products. Quality control, uh, this kind of uh, production is uh, very sensitive about quality. The accuracy and tolerances are in microns. Somebody showed uh, before a, a very uh, small uh, tolerances. This is, the, this is not the final. What the next, the next slide, slide was about the quality certification. And uh, uh, the last one was uh, location, the factory and uh, contacts. Uh, what is interesting is uh, our company is uh, 30 years old. So during the last uh, 10 years, uh, we developed uh, five times uh, and uh, now uh, we have a turnover of uh, 80 million euro uh, to 80% of the products uh, is delivered to uh, foreign countries. And uh, the company is uh, most famous uh, in, with our foreign partners than, than in Bulgaria. The reason to be here is to introduce the company and to company to be known and for the future uh, for microelectronics development, electronics development and industry development, we are here to support this future development. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do apologize for that. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, indeed, this is uh, again another good example how we cooperate with the university, with the industry and we reached the final stage. This is the market. So 
our last but not least presentation will be uh, David Holding, Valio uh, Dinev will uh, present. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I will change the direction. I'm not going to present any related to the ele electronics directly, but we'll go to the mechanical. And especially, I want to present something about the digitalization. Because there is uh, so many buzzwords uh, about uh, di digitalization, but we, we have one particular case that maybe may would be interesting for you. And this is a real project that I will uh, briefly uh, show you. I hope that that uh, bloody device will work. I don't know which exactly button to push. Yeah, about the digitalization. Is there any need and uh, meaning about this? We are living in an analog world with a lot of analog objects world, uh, which is now in uh, accelerated development. And uh, yesterday's good is uh, today's not satisfactory. That's why digitalization is not just an option. And this is a uh, life uh, required uh, necessarily. Digitalization isn't a simple uh, task, and this is a big challenge. Digitalization required uh, knowledge and uh, computer uh, skills, and now we see that the dig digitalization, there is no alternative about that. Uh, where to start with the digitalization? Where should we digitalize our object? Uh, okay. Uh, digitizing the objects give us the ability to get into the details. Digitalization give us to choose the context to work on, and digitalization uh, digitalization gives us the uh, ability to have a, a localization of our effort. What could we digitalize? This is the machine uh, equipment structure objects. And how to do the digitalization? The 3D scanning is just uh, just only beginning. The polygons are just uh, the uh, start presentation, and the uh, uh, end result should be the native CAD model that uh, that could be work on. And the 3D scanning is just the beginning. We use. Uh, uh, I'm showing you the real project that we did about the Russian helicopter Mi-8. Mi this is a huge machine. It's not that easy even to imagine it. And what, uh, what is related to the digitalization, this is, uh, I'm sure that no one company did this in Bulgaria. Okay, the key Importance is uh, about uh, choosing the right scanner. We use Faro scanner from our friends in Varna. They came in Plovdiv at our announce and they did a uh, scanner. Uh, scan, uh, they do the, a lot of uh, uh, scanning from the multiple position. Then we choose the, uh, the position and we united in one single model. And it was initially a, a set of points, which gives us a scanned model could uh, not be uh, edited in any way. This wasn't a CAD model, because it was uh, just the beginning of uh, real work. Because we should go to the road from the uh, points to the real 3D CAD model. And the uh, way was from the cloud of uh, point to the STL model, then from the STL model to uh, have a profile curves and profile curves to the 3D uh, parts and from the 3D parts to the assembled model and again the hybrid model down, which was giving us the uh, view about how precise was the digitalization. So this is short video of the 3D 
assembled model inside cement NX format. Uh, the model consists of more than 6,000 unique assembled details. This is a big model, 6,000 unique assembled models. No any mutual intersection, all the assembly elements like rivets included inside the, mod inside the model and all the attributes of the metal parts in this. So uh, you may see how precise and how sophisticated is that model because this is not a scaled copy, this is a real-time 8 meters helicopter. And what was the reason to, to do that? Because the reason was to be ready to do the simulation and analysis for the repair of those helicopters. Because the customer is doing the repair of the helicopters. They brought the customer all the helicopters from the Near East, from Africa, and for all the countries which are using me, eight helicopters. And uh, our customers should do the uh, repair and this repair is, is to be very optimized because any repair means investment in the materials, investment in the human efforts, and it costs money. And being able to do the analysis of the damaged parts to evaluate the, uh, the extent of the repair, uh, the customer would, uh, is uh, capable to choose what to repair, what to change, what not to change, and to uh, evaluate which component could be uh, replaced with uh, from the other uh, sources and uh, what is uh, uh, the static and dynamic loads that the alternative parts are giving the, uh, for the repair. This is finite element modeling did on an entire helicopter and it is not an easy task because those are a lot of, uh, lot of parts inside. And we uh, give the, this is done with uh, NX Nastran uh, for, uh, for the dynamic evaluation of the stress and the limits where the model uh, is able to, to stand uh, with the uh, ability to predict which part should be uh, replaced with which part should stay uh, on inside the model. How we did this project? It was a small team of space craft engineers, it was three or four engineers which used to work for this for 11 months. It was a long time effort. Uh, and we used the software products for Faro, the reverse engineering for the point of clouds uh, processing. Then 3D system geomatic design X for reverse engineering of the scanned model. Then cement solid edge for 3D uh, part modeling and cement standard for finite assembly and finite element uh, analysis. Uh, at the end, a few words about the space car. This is company of David Holding since 1996. The major partner is Siemens Digital Industry Software, a company from the United States, which is in, internally uh, uh, with mental graphics. Mental graphics is related to the electronics. Those who are working for the electronics knows what the mental graphics is doing. Uh, then we offer the solution for the digital design, manufacturing, and product lifecycle management, uh, engineering services for design, simulation, and uh, manufacturing. And we do the manufacturing of very complex metal details through 3D print in metal. Thank you for your attention. That's all. I want to thank you, Mr.
Professor Todor, thank you very much for the chance you gave us. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, yeah, so all the presentations uh, were completed. Thank you very much. The panel with the eight uh, companies is over. So now we'll have five minutes and then we'll proceed with our round table. Five minutes, rest, and then we'll go on.